I'll, I'll face a bit heavy. And uh, we hope you enjoy your time here. What a gorgeous day it is. And uh, more importantly, you've come to listen to the Quarryman. So please give a big round of applause for the Quarryman. As painted with the poo in the pot, the little poo at three pounds and a week that was my pain. With a pocket full of tin, I was very soon taken in by the girl by the name of Maggie Lee. Turning up to hear the quarrymen. Uh, we hope to have a, an amusing afternoon. Keep keep it all rolling there. Now we started off as a skittle group, and uh, every good skittle group had a TGS base and a, a washboard. And we have a volunteer for each for number for this first one. So can we have our washboard volunteer Gene and Ed on the on the TGS base there? Come on, Sorry. give her a go. Right, you get that sorted out. Okay, we were inspired by Lonnie Donegan's Rock Island line, which uh, in January '56 uh, clawed its way up to number six in the hit parade. Uh, you don't fall over the cables, Eddie, it could be nasty. And uh, so Lonnie Donegan got everybody, well, not everybody, but a whole thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of youngsters in Britain, mostly boys, but not always, playing their own music and uh, people say it was easy you know you, you, it was homemade instruments it wasn't always homemade instruments the tea chest was more or less homemade you could get them from the grocers for half a crown you nick your nanny's washboard but you had to pay money for guitars and stuff anyway here we go Len's going to give us a song aren't you you're going to play Lost John, oh, lost, we pillage Lonnie Donegan's repertoire about no, lost lost at the time right well then, then it's gonna have a shot. 
but lost John, and his aim is improving every day. Come on, then. Right. Get on 
Before we do that, we're going to get Colin out from behind the drums to tell us how he came to be uh, a member of the Quarrymen, aren't we, Colin? Can you find him? Yes, there he is, he's down here. He's here somewhere. Come on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, as soon as he heard I brought a small drum kit from Frank Hesse's, he came up to my house to see them, asked me to play and I just put a jazz record on, tapped along the way I did. And he said, that's it, come down to my house and uh, you can join the corny man, because I was the only person in the whole country they knew who had a drum kit. So until I had a drum kit, I was in the corny man. <laughs> and he's been there ever since. Right, so this is uh, Jazz McGarrett's Thank you. 
Right, we've got one, one last skiffle number, then we gradually move on to rock and roll, which is what happened to the quarrymen. And so we've got our friend David here sitting in on bass for us. So David, in case you don't know, is a prolific, very well rehearsed Beatles author, and he's also written a beautiful book all about the country music scene in Liverpool, which gets tends to be in the shadow of the rock and roll scene. So uh, anyway, he's a, he's a smart guy, and he also plays the bass. I so I can't afford pub whiskey like that. <laughs> <laughs> a well rehearsed in life, not well rehearsed in music, but <laughs> can we have one? This is your last chance to play the washboard of the two chest bass. Okay, we've got two guys here in the front row. Normally we get ladies to do this, but uh, you know, what the heck? <laughs> we live dangerously. Uh, uh, right, hang on, hang on, right, put your foot on, right, that goes to your back, lean back on it, lean back on the stick, if you don't, yeah, it's tricky stuff, you've got it, Marty, you've got it, 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 you I'm not ready for the whistling yet. I'd, I'd vouch for your superior knowledge on that one. Well, you have to make sure that in the contract it says nobody on the front row is sucking lemons, otherwise it loses. <laughs> right. So we're going to do my favourite skiffle song, uh, which is putting on the style. Washboard, you're in G. Oh, Everybody else will see, okay? <laughs> okay. Count it. One, two, one, two.
Glenn, tell us about Elvis and Mean Moon Blues. You know what? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you're getting down. I write the set list in 24 point tight so they can be read from a distance and he still has to pick it up. What's the point? Elvis. Oh yeah, Elvis. Put his hymn sheet out and have a right. Well, John Lennon said before Elvis, there was nothing. That means a good rock and roller with a great musical talent, great looks, great everything. And Elvis had the loss. Now, Skiffle didn't last very long. Rock and roll came in on the scene because ships were coming across from the Atlantic and bringing all the rock and roll records. We had a good radio program called um, Radio Luxembourg, yeah. bringing all the American records. Um, so, Skiffle was dying out very quickly. So anyway, this is my favourite singer, is Elvis. <laughs> and this is me and Bum and Blues. Well, I got the woman to me that she can be. Charles about uh, the day John left Paul in Wolfie. Got the front doors open. He, he's got a draft of his shirt tied. Anyway, 6th of July 1957, um, the uh, quarrymen were invited to play on the St Peter's uh, Garden Fate. We, we always called it the Rose Queen actually because it was a they elected, or somebody chose some young lady to be the Rose Queen, and they had last year's Rose Queen. And then we all went around the village on the back of a truck, and then we went to the field behind the church, and there was uh, exciting things like the uh, Liverpool police dogs, you know, there was a man with a padded suit, and then Alsatian came along and took them out of his arm. German Shepherd, sorry. sorry. And uh, this was to discourage people like John Lennon from uh, being a villain, you know. 
And we played, we were supposed to be playing twice, but I think we only played once because everything got out of hand. And then uh, we were told to take our instruments over to the church hall because we were going to play in the interval the, for the grand dance. Tickets, two shillings and sixpence, the grand dance it was. So we took our stuff over there. Colin and I went home for our tea, and that was when John and Paul were introduced, and that apparently is when the Beatles started. Quote. It was when I finished, because it was the last gig I played with the quarry members. There you go, can't I remember. Anyway, this is the song we were playing when John, uh, when Paul saw us on stage, and he thought John was making up the words as he went along, which he wasn't. The problem was, he couldn't get the words, uh, he wouldn't buy all the records, so we'd go to a record shop with a pencil and a piece of paper, go into the booth, get him to play the record and try and scribble the words down. And if you got the words wrong, you have to make them up. So that was what John was doing, making the words up because we couldn't get the words off the record. And we always did it the same way. There you go. So because of that mistake, that's how the Lennon-McCartney partnership started, through a mistake, really, basically. Anyway, there we go. And this is a doo-wop number, so why a skiffle group were playing doo-wop, I have no idea, but there you go, we want to doo-wop our best, aren't we? Two, three, four, down, 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 do we be down? Tell the story for this year or two. Uh, 1958, the choir man was John, Paul, George, and myself on drums. And uh, they found out that there was a small recording studio was in Kensington, Liverpool, Percy Phillips. Uh, and if you could pay a small fee, you went down and you could actually make your own uh, disc. So we all decided that we would do that. And we all plugged in three shillings and six pence each. Uh, Paul brought a but, uh, the, t the piano played along, John Dufflo, because he wanted a bit of honky-tonk piano on it, and he'd written, in spite of all the danger, 
which we rehearsed a few Sundays in his house, Fulton Road, and then we went down on the 12th of July, 1958, to Percy Phillips Studios, and we recorded, uh, that would be the day, Buddy Holly's, that would be the day on one side, and then on the other side we did the one that uh, Paul had written, in spite of all the dangers. So after paying our money out, we walked out with a, a fantastic, what we thought was a fantastic record. And uh, I had it for the week, John had it for the week, you know, uh, George had it for the week, and as Paul says, John Duffalo had it for 20 years, so, <laughs> and he still did that. So Paul's still saying that, telling that story now, if you know, see any of his gigs, he, he tells that. But I'm glad that um, Duff had it, because he saved it, kept it safe, till it went on the anthology, so we all go off feeling six back after that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Colin. So why you tell them. <laughs> We'll do that song for you now. Yeah, we haven't got the drummer back yet. This is in spite of all the danger. First recording in the Sun Studio. Well, that's all right, Mama. I'm going to try and do that for you now. One, two, I want two.
side of that was an old bluegrass number. Now I, these guys all became rock and rollers. I, I became a bluegrass uh, guitar picker and uh, this was one of my favourite numbers. And uh, well, I think it's not only because it's uh, Yes, I prefer the original version then. But, but no, what we're going to do, we're going to play it because it's originally a waltz, okay? Yeah. And then uh, you'll see that Len starts to fall asleep and decides to wake everything up by doubling the tempo. So, this is Blue Moon of Kentucky. I said Blue Moon of Kentucky Keep on shining on Shining on the one that I'm going to be Because now Johnson is still the road
David. David. Oh, it's Well, I'm standing in with the quarry men, standing in for a beetle who stood in for a beetle. <laughs> you can follow that. So normally, the last few years, our friend Chas Newby's been playing bass with the quarry, but he can't make it today. So I'm standing in uh, for Chas. And of course, Chas stood in for Stuart Suckworth in the Beatles when they came back from Hamburg that first time. Played for four gigs over the Christmas of 1960. Chaz was the first left-handed bass player in the Beatles. And what Chaz did was he played a right-handed bass guitar upside down, left-handed. So in tribute to Chaz, I'm going to do my own twist on that. I'm going to play a right-handed bass guitar right-handed. <laughs> Do you like that one? Yeah, yeah. That's a bit complicated for me, that one. <laughs> but this is one of the songs, one of the original songs that the Beatles used to do in their set they did that night, which is one after nine, oh nine. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, hang on a minute, sorry. Wrong button. came up and uh, plugged us in. Oh, with them as well, yeah. <laughs> Enjoyed themselves on our various instruments. Uh, thanks very much for being a great audience. And uh, we're going to do a couple of rock and roll numbers and then wind it up. Okay? Thank you very much. We have a terrible problem when we play this with guys in Spain because they can never pronounce blue suede shoes. They go blue shoes, shoes. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a laugh about this amongst ourselves and our Spanish friends. We've got to have a laugh somewhere. Right, go for it then. One, two, one, two, three. One, four, one, two, four, go. Three, 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 Thank you. 
enjoyed your afternoon and uh, thank you to the quarrymen thank you for coming out and uh, keep an eye out for them on television uh, they'll be out on television soon um, yeah, thank you for helping make this an enjoyable afternoon yeah. and uh, just to say a uh, safety announcement if you're gonna if you park in Abbot, Abbot's Lee school that closes at 6 30 so you need to have your car out there <laughs> Uh, but the cafe is still open till 6 if you want to get a coffee or a drink. Okay. Thank you for coming. Another round of applause for the choir now. One quick one. A little special. This is for Paul McCartney. And he likes this one. Is it definitely our last number G, please? Wait early in the morning.